here you should reiterate that note for your second paragraph this will be and then include your support yourself, support yourself. Hi guys, it's Rachel and today's video is highly requested, especially for those of you that are starting a study permit application. Yes, because in today's video, I'll be giving some tips on how to write an effective statement of purpose or an explanation letter. So let's keep this intro short and let's jump right into it. So what is an SOP? Well, it stands for Statement of Purpose and it's basically a self-written letter of explanation submitted as supporting documents along with your study permit application. Your SOP will then be reviewed by an immigration officer and it is your job to explain as to why you are coming to Canada as an international student. Uh, but Rachel, it says here on the online application that a client letter is only optional. So do I even need one? Ah, good question. Although it says it's optional, having an SOP is actually beneficial to your study permit application. And here's why. Number one, we can explain certain weaknesses in your application. For example, if you're an older applicant, sometimes immigration officers may be on your case more as compared to younger applicants and so having an SOP can be beneficial for you in explaining your motivations for pursuing studies in Canada. Number two, you can use an SOP to clarify certain vague issues like gaps in your education or employment. For example, you stopped studying because you gave birth or you became a mother and you wanted to be with your child in their formative years and when you felt that it was safe that's when you wanted to continue your education so you have to explain gaps like those in your SOP third this is also a good opportunity to mention where you'll be getting your financial support noting down your proof of financial support reassures the immigration officer that you can in fact support yourself during your stay in Canada as an international student. Number four, and this is actually a rare case, but there are times that your SOP can be your savior, especially if you have received a refusal on your study permit application. This is because you can use your SOP as evidence in court. Let's say you received a refusal, but you feel that your study permit application was strong and well-written and well-supported. Well then, you can actually challenge the immigration officer's decision at the federal court. The judge will take a look at your evidence to see if you are in fact right or if the immigration officer's decision was reasonable or acceptable. The judge can accept your explanation letter and even overturn that refusal. So, in cases like this, having an SOP can be the major difference between a refusal and an acceptance. Yeah, I actually made a video about it over here where the federal court overturned a refusal. So do check that out. Okay, so now let's move on to the next big thing and let's talk about the things that you will need to include in your SOP or statement of purpose letter. Big disclaimer here, you guys. The format that I'm about to share with you guys is only a guide. Again, this is only a guideline to help you guys formulate your own SOP, so do not take this format as legal advice. Bruh. I want to emphasize how each case is different and well, the format can change depending on the information that you will provide in your application. But yeah, now that that's out of the way, let's dig in. Tip number one, of course, start your SOP with the current date. So don't forget the date in your written SOP so that the immigration officer that's reviewing your file knows when exactly you wrote this letter. Tip number two, include contact details of the immigration office you are contacting. 
So for my case, I applied to the VFS Global in Makati, Manila, Philippines. And so the address that I use is the address that you see on your screen. Tip number three, include identifiable information about yourself. Start with your legal name. So I prefer to start mine with my last name in capital letters, followed by a comma, followed by my first name. In the same line, I also note down my date of birth. And below that, I also included a subject line that encapsulates the purpose of this letter. So in this case, I stated letter of explanation for my study permit application. And well guys, I'll show you a photo of it on your screen. There. Tip number four, and that's because I'm a bit of a neat freak, but separate your paragraphs with headings and subheadings as this will make it easier for the immigration officer reviewing your file to fully understand your situation. Your first paragraph is typically your introductory paragraph. So include brief details about yourself, like your name, your age, your country of citizenship, and etc. Also include a brief statement about one to two sentences of why you are pursuing an education at a specific school here in Canada. Be original and be creative about yours. Next, for your second paragraph, this will serve as a supplementary piece to your first paragraph. So here, you will outline in detail your reasons for wanting to study in Canada. Make sure that your reasons are supported with evidence, such as transcripts, degrees, diplomas, or certificates, letter of employment, etc. And provide a statement of how your education in Canada will benefit you educationally or career-wise. Third paragraph, and I believe that this is the most important paragraph in your application that you really have to be meticulous and careful in writing because this is your time to address any concern that you think the officer may have of you. For instance, you never traveled outside of your country. Yeah, the officer may be concerned that you might not abide by your study permit conditions or may think that you will not leave Canada at the end of your stay. So if you can relate to this, well then give examples or supporting evidence that you in fact have abided by your local laws or academic rules or that you are just generally a person that leads a law-abiding life. Another example of a concern that you may want to address is financial concern. For example, if you or your parent will not be paying for your tuition or will be paying a very small amount, give a very detailed explanation of who will and why. That sponsor must explain their motivations as to why they are paying that large sum of money for your education. Lastly, this is also a good time to mention that you have strong ties to your home country. If you have direct family members that will be staying behind during your studies, it may be good to mention that as well. Last but not least, your fourth paragraph should tie everything together. It will serve as a summary of your reasons for wanting to come to Canada as a student. Here, you should reiterate that pursuing this education is necessary for your advancement or something else that is tailored to your situation. This is also where you should mention evidence or supporting documents that can back up your statements. And I really like to organize them in a logical and chronological manner. So for example, I like to group all my identity documents, followed by my finance-related documents, followed by my education and work documents. I mean, that's just me, but really, it's up to you. At the end, sign your letter off with a respectful letter ender such as sincerely, yours truly, best regards, or something along those lines. And then include your signature with your full name and contact details such as your address, your phone, and email at the bottom. And there you go! 
That's it folks, there you have it. You can now write an effective SOP or statement of purpose for your study permit application. So yay, you should give yourselves a pat on the back. Anyway, I do hope that you find this video helpful. If you have additional questions, you know the drill. Comment it down below and I'll try my best to get back to you on your question or concern. Follow me on my social media as well. I have a TikTok account and it's currently at 10,000 followers. So thank you so much you guys for your support. That's at rrdencel, so do check that out. I also have an Instagram account, it's right over here, where it's more of my personal journey of my life here in Canada. So if you want to get to know more about me and my life and like my aesthetic, do check out my Instagram page as well. And it's at rrdencel too. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you're all safe and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.